In 2020, more than 159 million Americans exercised their right to vote in the presidential election. But there should have been more. 5.2 million Americans couldn't vote because of felony disenfranchisement laws. 1.4 million alone are in Florida, but one man has been working to change that. Desmond Mead lost his civil rights, including his right to vote, after serving time. But then he started an organization called the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition and led the charge to have Florida laws changed, restoring voting rights to millions with prior felony convictions as long as they paid any outstanding fines and fees. Desmond's group then raised $27 million to help pay the fines and fees for those who couldn't afford to. But like the millions of others, uh, Desmond, too, had his voting rights restored, but the rest of his civil rights were not. That is until five days ago, 17 years after being released from prison, the Florida Board of Executive Clemency restored Desmond's civil rights. Here's the moment he found out. <laughs> Wow, state of Florida. Filed an executive order on 6-23-2021 with the Secretary of State in compliance with Article 4, Section 8A of the Florida Constitution, which grants to Desmond Mead, known as Desmond B.B. The restoration of civil rights. Bam. Executive, Executive Director of the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition and a MacArthur genius, Desmond Mead is back. Desmond, we just had you on last week to talk about this genius grant honor, and now this. Uh, first, congratulations on having your civil rights restored. They really got you good. We saw how emotional you got, but tell us what you felt uh, when you saw that letter. Wow, you're deep. First of all, it's always a pleasure to be on with you. And to add to my title, I'm also, also author of Let My People Vote, which actually tells my story yes. uh, of, 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 of overcoming all these obstacles and, of course, the Our Amendment 4 efforts. But let me tell you, that day, uh, my wife really got me good. And, you know, the thing that was going through my mind was basically that I didn't cross that line by myself. You know, many years ago under a uh, previous administration, I could have gotten my civil rights back, but I, you know, my wife, she talked about it that morning, how I told her, no, babe, I want to, I want to get my rights when everybody else get there. I want more than just me crossing that finish line. And, and so I was able to do that for my voting rights by passing Amendment 4. And then when I got my civil rights restored, uh, that was a moment that was extra special because it was a result of a new policy that we helped usher in that now anyone who uh, qualifies for Amendment 4 automatically qualifies to get the rest of their civil rights restored. And so just thinking about the, the, the thousands, hundreds of thousands of people uh, who now uh, can not only just vote, but now they've cleared the uh, uh, barriers to allow them to pursue careers and and to uh, be a part of our economy. You know, I could buy a house now. You know, I could sit for the Florida bar, and you know what else I could do, Yo D? I I could run for office. Mm. Uh, you know, I'm all for that, right, Desmond? Okay, so you mentioned sitting for the Florida bar. I want to remind people that you graduated from. Florida International University um, uh, College of Law almost 10 years ago, um, but because your civil rights were stripped, you couldn't take the bar exam or practice law. Now you can sit for the bar, you can get licensed, and you can practice. What does that mean to you? Well, that, that's definitely a, another step forward. You know, it really speaks to how we need to actually remove barriers for people with felony convictions and allow them to really successfully reintegrate back into their community. You know, with me, um, I think my story is a good example. You know, I've overcome so much. I've dedicated uh, so much of my time to improving my community and, and the lives of those around me, you know, to not be able to pursue a career in law, I thought was a travesty. It was a slap in the face. And it said, you know what, no matter how much you rehabilitate yourself, no matter how much you uh, make yourself an asset, we're still going to limit 
you know, what you can do in life. And so me being able to now sit for the bar, I think is a step forward in the right direction. And I hope it inspires other people to keep pressing and, and, and to know, no matter what obstacles are in front of them, if they could just remain focused and have that persistence, it pays off. So Desmond, do you plan on sitting for the bar? You know, <laughs> that's a great question, you know, because, <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> you know, studying for the bar is no joke, right? And, and right now I live in Florida and, you know, the state of Florida has enough craziness going on to keep anybody's <laughs> hand full, you know, and, and we have a, a gubernatorial election that's right around the corner. We're still fighting against voter suppression and other barriers uh, to not only uh, returning citizens, but barriers that make it harder for marginalized communities to really be a part of, of, of this democracy and this economy. And so, you know, with having to continue to fight to uh, like pay off the fines and fees of over 700,000 individuals, uh, having to work to get over 600,000 people who don't have fines and fees registered to vote, and then getting them to turn out the vote so that the voices of returning citizens can be a deciding factor in any election, whether it be state, federal, or local election, that's a lot of work. And so I just want to make sure that our organization uh, is uh, fine-tuned and, and humming, uh, hitting all pistons before I would break away to study for the bar. Okay, so you talked about a lot of crazy going on in Florida. There's a lot of crazy happening in this country. I mean, obviously, you know, there's a political fight going on uh, over voting rights uh, because we're seeing an organized effort to suppress voting rights, right, beyond those with prior convictions. So how is your organization responding to this threat? Well, we're staying away from, I would tell you, we're staying away from the politics of it. Uh, one thing that we've seen, everyone has seen during uh, covid Man, when, when politicians are involved, man, people die. This country becomes even more divided. And what we're doing is focusing more on the people, right? And so if folks want to uh, implement laws to make it harder for people to vote, then what we're going to do, we're going to double down our efforts and register even more people. You know, we're not going to uh, just uh, 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 limit ourselves to a certain area of the state. We're covering the entire state of Florida. We're going from county to county, city to city, registering people. Pay, helping people pay off their fines and fees, getting their family members registered to vote. You know, one of the things that a lot of people uh, overlook is like in the 2020 election, we had over 101,000 returning citizens that voted in that election. But in addition to that, over 178,000 of their family members, right, also voted in uh, the 2020 election. And so we're not just mobilizing returning citizens. We're mobilizing people who uh, otherwise would not have voted. People who think, think that their vote didn't count or that elections were the waste of time, we're getting them excited about going to the polls. And when they go to the polls, they're going to know the difference between a politician and a public servant. And so we do our best to try to take the politics out of it because when the politicians going back and forth, the only people that lose is us regular people. Desmond, my last question to you uh, is, is an important one because you are so eloquent in being able to express how it feels to, to not have your civil rights, to not um, be a full citizen or treated as second class citizens. Most Americans don't know what that's like. Please tell us what that's like for so many millions of people that pay taxes, that contribute to society, but still can't exercise their fundamental rights. Yo, deep, you know that that's deep. you know when I when, when I think of the question you know my mind goes to the fact that deep down inside of each and every one of us we want to be loved we want to feel as if we belong and when you strip somebody of the right to vote which is the most telling indicator of citizenship of being a part of society when you tell them that you're no longer part of us and you would never be a part of us you know, that's that's a very hurtful thing, you know, and, and, and I know that that causes some people to uh, react by suppression that hurt, right, and that pain by creating an indifference to voting and civic engagement. And and I've seen it all the time. The, the Some of the main people that say my vote don't count are people who know deep inside that they can't even vote. 
and that's just a, a, a coping mechanism. And so I know that, you know, when I went in and, and I voted in my very first presidential election, you know, the feeling that I had was a feeling of, of validation, right? And I understood that voting actually transcended the, the partisan politics that is actually trying to dictate who vote and who don't vote, that what voting speaks to more than, than that is the fact that it validates our existence as a human being within a society and the value of our voice, the value of our existence. And I, I understand now how when people are saying that they wish that they would be able to live long enough to be able to cast the ballot, right? I understand that, that, that yearning that folks have to be a part of something. Voting rights advocate and icon, author and genius, Desmond Mead. Always a pleasure. And again, congratulations, my friend.